city of Cape Town and refugees occupying the Central Methodist Church were back in court today. A judge called for the city, police and home affairs to meet them to find a solution to the conflict. The city's lawyer says the group has attacked and intimidated people as well as broken bylaws. But the refugees say that's not true. Let's get reaction now from today's court proceedings. I'm joined by the representative for the refugees, Jean-Pierre Balouche. He's in our Cape Town studios. Jean-Pierre, thanks for your time. We appreciate it. So a judge asked last week for authorities and refugees to meet and reach a solution. Why hasn't that happened? What's the problem? Yeah. Um well, that's done to everyone, and that could not happen to the uh, lack uh, of faith from the city of Cape Town because they were not coming with good faith in order to discuss this issue of refugees. So what weren't you happy about exactly? What was the city not saying to you that you wanted and you didn't agree on anything? Yeah, because they were saying that we need to vacate that, the place that because we are causing many uh, problems and uh, worry about tourists and money that they needed to uh, to uh, uh, get when tourists are coming in the country, in the city. But and as you uh, stated earlier on, that we've been accused of intimidating tourists and uh, harassing people and and many more uh, kind of. Uh, accusation that ha have no basis or have no grounds that we have been accused of and we said and we refute it not in only in court but even in the meetings that we had with the city uh, home affairs and the police we refute those uh, baseless uh, accusations that they brought into the court without even having any tangible proof because as far as I know, when we are there at that uh, uh, CMC at uh, Central Methodist Church in, in, in town, we don't intimidate tourists, we don't even uh, threaten tourists, we don't even threaten anybody. And the lies that we saw on the, pa on the paper were when they said one third of the mar um, green market uh, square vendors uh, have, have, have decided to close their businesses. So we still have pictures of the yeah. full green market square where there's nobody that has ever closed. So you can see the kind of... Um, various allegations these are, uh, are distorting trying to distort the reputation of refugees yeah. because i know as, as far as I, i'm concerned i see the city is obsessed of uh, where the refugees and they are trying to take advantage on the weaknesses of refugees be after they've ordered the police to come and shoot at the refugees spray at them abusing them and everything they are not uh, satisfied as as far as they haven't killed most of refugees the way they always want to see people die when they commit their uh, actions with the police but what i'm trying to say is that the situation, uh, the city, when we've been recommended by the, uh, the judge from the court on the, uh, the 9th that we have to meet and discuss the way forward, kind of finding alternative accommodation where refugees can be moved to. Uh, the city were adamant, and when we, meet for, when we met for the first day, that was on Tuesday, we went to meet and they said, they came with a proposal suggesting that they could provide an, an accommodation or a temporary accommodation for five days. And then the Home Affairs also said five days could not be enough because they still have a lot to engage with the refugees and tell refugees of what's going on. Yeah. And also doing their verification in terms of the immigration or in terms of the documentations. And also we said that five days cannot be enough because five days where will the refugee go to? And so wait, were, hold uh, on, hold on. Uh, I want to try and establish what exactly you yes. want the city to do. You want them to provide alternative accommodation pending you uh, working through Home Affairs to get the required documents to leave the country? The required documents and wearing the UNSR to come and involve itself with the refugees, as the UNSR was saying that they need to engage with the refugees on one-on-one -on -one interviews because they need to come and assess refugees and get them to a safer place, a safer country where they can be welcomed, where they can be uh, treated like human beings, as you can see now. But not Even the back city home. of Cape Town is really showing it over. And, yeah. Not back to your home country. Back home the is, UNHCR uh, I think, 
said uh, uh, that they can't take yeah. you anywhere else to another country? Uh, no, the UNSR never said that. The only people who are, were saying that is this uh, person whom we will never trust again or we never even want him to involve this Chris Nielsen of the Human Rights Commission. He is the one that has distorted and even causing disrepute within every type of negotiation. And we never want, even as I'm setting now, we don't want to see this man involving himself in the matter of refugees is incompetent and is a very hypocrite and someone that is bringing disrepute in our struggle in our problem that we are facing in here in south africa a man who's supporting refugees to sell their life for four thousand five hundred cannot be trusted and we don't want him in our situation at all he must he stay far and UNHCR. away from our situation with the lady that yes he was claiming to represent the UNHCR himself, and he's speaking on, the, on behalf of the UNHCR. Who is he? He doesn't work in the UNHCR at all, and he's not even known. So he's trying to play cards as if he's there to represent the UNHCR. And we are saying, no, he's not there, and he doesn't work, and he's not even known within the UNHCR office that we know ourselves, that we always engage and interact with them. Now, so he must stay away. You know we don't want someone like him to call himself and get you back to another country because they could possibly help getting you back to your home country but not to another country but this is a sticking point that you're not willing to budge on if you say uh, yeah if you say so that means you have to remember for me to remind you something South Africa is a signatory to a non refoulement state you understand me what I mean is a signatory to a non refoulement convention so South Africa cannot refoul refugees and take them back to the country where they, they run from uh, the persecution. Mm. You understand what I mean? So before people speculate or before people to speak, they need to know about the law or the uh, right of refugees before going to say, and people are talking about uh, repatriation and the resettlement. There is a difference between repatriation and the resettlement. Repatriation, you take someone back to his home or home country. And deportation is what you are saying, South Africa is saying they cannot take people. South Africa can never at all uh, refuel people who ran from, uh, from, from uh, persecution from their countries. So people need to understand, not only to talk because they want to talk. Mm. They need to talk what they know. And if they don't know, they must come and ask us. We'll teach them what the meaning of refugees, what the meaning of refoulement, what the meaning of repatriation, and what the, me the meaning of deportation, the meaning of also resettlement. So okay. if people don't know anything, they shouldn't be talking about words which they don't understand. You know what I mean? All right. Yeah. Thank you so much for your time. We appreciate it. That's Jean-Pierre Balouche, representative for the refugees in Cape Town. Still